Okay guys, welcome back. Since we're running a little low on time, I wanted to postpone the painting of the cockpit because it's a little bit more elaborate. I just want to finish the main body, the main component with the adding the wings, adding the intakes and whatnot. And then at least we got that whole thing out of the way. As you remember, uh, we put uh, the intakes together here and I added some putty where the transition was between the actual intake and the intake fairing or housing. So that's dry, so it only takes a little bit of sanding to make it smooth. Uh, you really, once it's installed, you really won't see any major lines or creases or, or gaps. Try to keep the putty to a minimum because it's a narrow gap and it's very hard to reach unless you have like a sanding stick or maybe some sandpaper you can wrap around your finger and really smooth the whole thing flush. But again, don't go too far. The fit is pretty pretty decent. Once it's installed, you are hardly gonna see anything. Let me uh, go over it with a little sandpaper and then uh, we'll come back and then install it on the fuselage. It's also very important to note, and I think I mentioned that the last time too, this intake here has very, very sharp points. Uh, you will immediately notice that. Try not to, if possible, to compromise those. Try to stay away when you are uh, sanding. Be careful where you put your sanding stick or your sandpaper because they easily will break and you easily will bump into something and it might bend them or worst case scenario, they will break and it really needs those it, it really needs the crispness of the points to match fuselage. Check the other one. Seems to be pretty flush. All right, I think we're there. So let's see if we can glue them in place. Out of experience, of course, it's always very smart to test fit them. They seem to be mating very, very well. It's not going to be an issue at all. Let's try the other side. And again, a perfect match, perfect fit. As you can tell, here it's a very very narrow there's don't need any putty or anything it might be wise though once you glue the component in place to run a little tiny bead along the edges to ensure that nothing will come loose or unattached while gluing the other pieces in place so that's what I'm gonna do right now it's gonna be very very careful and just run a bead next to it that is also, uh, again, the good characteristic of a plastic weld, that if you do it just once, it dries very quick, it really doesn't eat into the plastic, and it makes a perfect bond. I'm gonna do it on the other side, maybe here a little bit too, where it matches with the landing gear well. Just once, just a little. The plastic weld is so thin, it will get into the core of the crease, it will do its job. And I'm gonna do it on this side too, just one single. And then maybe a little bit on the front here to ensure that nothing will come loose or shift or I would very gently put a little tape around it to hold it in place just until uh, the weld dries it only takes a couple minutes now be very careful once you put the plastic weld on and you run the bead around it because of the plastic weld it will immediately start the reaction when melting the plastic and bonding the plastic together so you, you really don't want to push here because it, there might be some glue or melted plastic oozing out there or squeezing out of the crease so you don't want to do that you just want to be very careful and hold that in place uh, by putting a little bit of masking tape over it but don't even push it just gently hold it in place and it will be fine the rest doesn't really need this now let's do the other side again be very careful that you don't go over the, the edge and have a run on your outer surface which might blemish the plastic just keep this to a minimum once it's in place you can run the bead and that will take care of it there you go Again, we're going to do the same. That 
should be sufficient. I can see that this joint here, it probably needs a little bit more pressure. So again, we do the same very gently, push it in place and tape it and then let it dry. Afterwards, when you remove the tape and you have here and there a little tiny gap or a little bit of a space that opened up or maybe the glue didn't uh, really do its job, you can always run another bead over it and uh, that will, I'm sure that will correct everything. But for now it looks pretty good. Everything is in place. There seems to be no gaps or any... No, I don't see anything. It's actually a perfect, a perfect weld, perfect fit. So, okay, I'm gonna remove this just it, because it doesn't interfere. I'm gonna put those two fairings here. I'm gonna put those in place and that should take off the whole intake. As I mentioned in the previous chapters, this is a kit that is really well put together. It's also very important that you don't rush the build. This is a very, very highly sophisticated kit actually. It's really well engineered and the fit is basically, in my book, it's almost close to perfection. If you take your time, then you will see there is no need for any putty or any extra work. So do it one step at a time, one part at a time. Again, it, it will be a fun build with not much sanding, not much filling, just straightforward. As you can see, I did not even put uh, plastic weld on the edges. I just put the part in place and then run a small bead next to it. And now I'm just maybe for 30 seconds, I'll put some light pressure on there to hold it in place. There is not much pressure needed, but I just want to make sure that the plastic weld has the time, that it has the time to make a little bit of a bond. And there we go. It should be in place and there should be no complications. The instructions of Tamiya say that now it's the time to put a fuselage in place, the front fuselage in place. But as I mentioned in earlier in this session when we started the video, we run a little bit behind with painting the cockpit and I don't want to rush it. But in the meantime, we can finish mounting the engines and also mounting the wings. Last time we did the engines, so now it's time to tackle the back of the fuselage and then we'll attach the wing. So I'm gonna apply some plastic weld here around the edges. Okay. I'm gonna hold it in place a little bit like this. Let's try the other one. Now as before, as I did with the whole setup of the intakes, I'm gonna run a small or a light bead of glue around it very gently because we want this nice and clean and crisp just to secure the engine cone to the fuselage. And that should suffice. I was extra careful not to spill any glue in between these creases here because I want those to be open or at least give the illusion that they are open. Let's put the wings in place because according to the instruction sheet we are ready for that. I think the best thing to do is put some glue on the spars here. Make sure that you don't use too much glue. It's not necessary. The wings will stay in place even without glue. Once you put them in, in a certain position, I'm sure they will stay in place, but just to secure them, just to be safe. You don't want to run into any surprises. Before you actually start gluing or start assembling, according to the uh, Tamiya instructions, you should extend the wings like this. And then all these things come extra visible here. And this is where a couple of the major glue points you can use. Make sure you don't touch anything on the upper fuselage so the wing doesn't stick on the fuselage. Just gently go over the spars, especially around here. Okay. And gently move it in place. There we go. And as you can tell, uh, there is a, a nice little fit here. Uh, so the main thing, if you already put glue here, you should actually be in good shape. But then again, add a little bit more on the intersection of, of the wing spars and you should be fine. Let's do the same on the other side. Again, extend the wings to the fully extended position. Put some glue on the spars here. And now on the major glue point right here at the root. Okay. There we go, there we have it. Kind of amazing how they engineered it and how it works, very nicely done. We should be almost ready. I don't think there is much more 
that we can add on to the fuselage except for this little tail here yes uh, we cannot forget this I almost forgot this part so let's put that glue that in place real quick I think I have to sand it a little I forgot that part from last session and I need to make sure that all these things are flush so let's put the sanding stick to it Uh, also run a little bead around it just to make sure perfect okay so after looking over the main or the main body I think we have everything in place that should be in place uh, except for of course the pylons but that's for later when we once we tackle the ordnance for now I think we're gonna put this aside let it completely dry and then eventually made up with the main forward fuselage in the next session, we'll tackle the landing gear because that's also a main part of uh, preparation for the final painting. In the next session, we'll talk entirely about the front and the main landing gear. So until then.